Hello and welcome to Lenrix Ram. I am Matt and in this video I want to tell you the story of my Lumbos twins. It's been a while since I last worked on my Gloom's White Gits. From time to time it is important to switch gears and paint a warband with a different style or work on a terrain piece or two. Especially if you work on a Warhammer army that is composed of a lot of similar looking models. But I haven't forgotten my gits and I knew sooner or later I wanted to come back to them. In fact in this video I want to talk about one of the greatest models that Games Workshop produces. At least in my opinion. Of course I'm talking about the Loom Boss on Giant Case Quick. Now building and painting this model was a blast and the end product makes me very happy. So much so in fact that I went and bought another one of these models. I did that because while working on the Loom Boss on Giant Caves Quick I got an idea for a model of a Loom Boss with Giant Caves Quick. Yes, there are actually two different units with different rules that have very similar names. And I have to admit this was a bit confusing at first. But the similarity in names inspired me to imagine a backstory for Flitz and Blitz, the Loon Twins. In the darkest of nights, when even shadows dare not to tread through caverns deep, a single mushroom glows alone. Underneath it a new terror, a new malice, a new life. But this cap is different from all the others. This mushroom in defiance of order and normality has two caps and underneath it not a single terror but two. Not a single malice but two. Not a single life but two. These are the inseparable loon twins, Flitz, rider of the most dangerous creature there is, the cave squick, and Blitz in his loon chariot that is pulled by the same ferocious animal. Together they spread insanity, mold, and the death in pursuit of the Everdank, the end of all realms. Coming up with backstories for your models, terrain pieces or your complete army is a very satisfying thing to do, especially when this informs you on how to paint your army, build your terrain or gives you ideas for conversions. Instead of relying on existing lore and characters, you get to decide on how you want your tabletop games to look like. Now as I already said, the Loom Boss on Giant Cave Squick, or in my case the Loon Twin Flitz, is one of my favorites in the Gloom Spite Gits line. As for the chariot riding blitz, rules wise I want this to be a loom boss with a giant cave squeak. But as I don't like the normal model and wanted to incorporate my background story, I decided to go the conversion route. So the basic idea for this build is to take the squeak model and put a chariot at the back of it. Thanks to my warmer fantasy days I remembered the boar chariot, a model almost as great as the loom boss riding a squeak. Luckily I recently acquired one via eBay, so I just needed to combine both models somehow, which of course needed a bit of modification. I started with this quick. Here I removed the small piece of skin when normally a loom boss would grab onto the creature while riding into battle. I filled the hole with milliput as well as the other dents in the skin that act as sort of glue gaps for the loom boss. After about a day or so of drying time I mixed some green stuff and wrapped that around this quick. I also took a bit of jewelry chain and wrapped that around the green stuff bulge. I was aiming for a look where the chain would sit so tight around the quick that it actually would cut a bit into the skin. And in the end I think I overdid it a bit with the green stuff and next time I think I will use a bit less. I let the epoxy putty dry and started my work on the chariot. Normally this model holds two boards, which are each almost as thick as a squick. Pretty lean squick or pretty meaty boars. However you see it, I needed to modify the two boar carriage into a one squick carriage. 
For this I simply removed the bar in the middle. I also shortened the other bars on the side to accommodate the squig. The leather straps connecting the chain around the squig and the chariot were also shortened. At this point I could start to bring both pieces together. For that I first needed the right base size. Luckily Games Workshop provides this handy reference guide which shows that the required base size for this unit is 60mm. So if you want to start your own conversion project and you want to use a completely different model than intended, this is a good starting point. You find the link in the description down below just in case you want to start your own project. With the right base size figured out, I started with decorating the base. As the squig chariot would only barely fit on the base, I glued a chunk of bark to the base that was a bit longer than 60mm. With a few more bark chips, I also built up the ground structure to make it a bit more uneven and natural. I wanted a very dynamic pose and imagined the chariot being tossed around by the uneven ground and the ferocious advance of its draft animal. For that reason, I wanted one wheel in the air, while the other would connect to the base. As this would be the only and therefore not very reliable contact point to the base, I used a very thick aluminium wire to pin the card. I adhered the model to its designated place and hit the parts where the wire could be seen with more bark chips. As always, I tried to work in a well-ventilated place and use a protective mask to be safe from all the fumes the superglue produces especially with the quantities of glue involved here. Now it was time for the squig. This one I pinned with the florist wire, which I usually use to adhere my models to their bases. I glued the card to the chain wrapped around the squig and hit the gaps between the model and the base with more bark chips. And with that I could start to work on some of the details. The first thing I wanted to take care of was the broken standard at the back of the chariot. I simply used a wooden skewer to act as a pole. These are a bit thicker than your standard toothpicks and are perfect for wooden poles or similar things. For the headpiece I used this bit from the Grotz kit. Also I wanted a bit of fungal overgrowth on the model, so I added a few of my self-made green stuff mushrooms. They were easily made with epoxy putty which I roughly formed to small caps and spread around on baking paper. The dried caps were then glued to a bit of wire which would act as a stool. So very basic and simple mushrooms. Another thing I added were these resin mushrooms from Chromlec. As you can see the basic chariot has these blades which in this case were weirdly looking downwards. But they also have a very orky vibe for me. So I went ahead and removed them and replaced them with these big mushroom caps. This is much more gloomy and shroomy and is probably the first detail that I had in my head about the chariot. Crazy shroom rims. And if I'm honest, I really really like them. The last little detail which I really like is this mushroom. It comes from a Reaper Bones kit and the great thing about it is that it's screaming. So I put it directly in the path of this somewhat out of control chariot. At least we know now why this mushroom is screaming. With all the details in place, I added texture paste to a few selected places. I also used this to hide the transition between mushroom and chariot. After this was dry, I used a bit of PVA to add a bit of fine turf flock to a few selected parts of the model. Because I wanted to paint this later, involving some heavy dry brushing, I needed to make sure this flock wouldn't come off easily. Therefore I sprayed the flock with isopropyl alcohol and used water down PVA with a pipette to make this bond even stronger. Now you may be wondering where in all of this is Blitz, the rider of this vehicle. Well that's a good question. I built the model of the Loom Boss separately and also pinned it. As it won't have a lot of contact surface, I deemed this a good method to keep the grot in place. I test fitted the model, drilled a hole for the pin and with that I could move on to the painting step.
I kept the chariot and the loom boss separate for the majority of the painting process, which I started with priming the chariot in black. With the airbrush I based the squeak in red, followed by a coat of ochre yellow from above. The mouth and tongue were based in magenta by Molotov. Something I do with all my grots is to add a shadow sensation with deep turquoise ink, so I did this here with my squeak as well. For the wooden chariot I used the same quick wood recipe I used in my previous Gitz projects. The black prime card got a dusting of titanium white with the airbrush. This was followed with a transparent burnt umber and sap green ink to get the right colors. In the end I dry brushed the wood with a sand tone. The head of my standard was based on the same ochre color I used on the squig. After that I used my airbrush from a below angle to give it a dark shadow with deep turquoise. Now it was time to add some glow. I used Molotov's shock blue middle tone to base all my mushrooms. The overspray of the airbrush also adds a simple glow effect which I use on all of my Gitz pieces. I also dusted the base a bit in this tone. After all the glowy parts were based I went back with magenta ink to give the ground its final base color. I also fixed some of the magenta overspray with the blue in a few places. Another recurring theme with my gits is that they do have pretty rusty and worn out metal parts. With my twins I slightly changed my method from working from a rust tone as a base color. Instead I based all the metal pieces in dark blue and started to stipple on a charred brown and red ochre mix, followed by a selected application of pure red ochre. Then I went in with Gunmetal by Vallejo to stipple on the metallic sensation. With Silver I added selected highlights to all the metals. After painting a few highlights on the squig and chariot, it was time to move to the rider. I primed Blitz with a Patrick color. After that I based the skin with Molotov of Future Green, which I followed with a shadow application of deep turquoise from below and a highlight of transparent yellow ink from above. I also gave the head and the hands small highlights with the color Grasshopper. With that I painted all the metallic parts of the loom boss the same way I painted them on the chariot. For the eyes I went with red ochre as a base and followed this with an application of fluorescent red by Liquitex. And in the end I covered the pin in black so it wouldn't be so noticeable. I attached Blitz to the chariot with super glue and prepared the next step, oil paints. I like working with oil paints and they are essential in my Gloom Spite Gitz army. In my opinion they are quite forgiving when used for shading or highlighting. But before I could start with them, I varnished this model with a gloss varnish because I work with inks that can be quite delicate. When you start to remove the oil paints with cotton swabs, it can happen that the rubbing on these layers can damage the paint job somewhat. I applied a general coat of a dark violet wash that I mix with magenta, a dark blue and odorless white spirit. This went all over the model, except for the mushroom caps and the base. After a short drying time of about 15 minutes, I wiped it away from the most exposed parts. I also worked in some highlights, like the off-white color on the horns and teeth, or a bright green color on the grot skin. I also enhanced the glow effect of the mushroom with a blue and white mix. A few days of drying time later, I came back and dry brushed the base with a light skin tone for the rocks and a bright blue for the turf. And with that, and a coat of matte varnish as a finish, my Loon Twins were ready to ride into battle. And here are Flitz and Blitz in all their glory. Man, I'm happy with them. Especially because I really don't like the official Loom Boss with Giant Cave Squeak. 
Now, what do you think? Have you made a conversion like this before? And if so, what did you make? I really would like to read about your conversions in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and if you liked this video, why not leave a like? Also, I'd be happy if you would consider subscribing to the channel. This way you won't miss another chapter of my little hobby journey. And if you are interested in the Gitz army I'm currently working on, you can find here another video about them. With that, I hope to see you next time and until then, farewell fellow adventurers.